And we get everything all painted. And uh, there's just a few touch-up spots I have to do from where I had these resting. These pins are finally loose, all shined up. And we also have a big old bucket of nice clean gears. So it's, not, it's time to start putting the uh, everything together. I haven't got the nameplate for this yet. Um, I have to order that. But I did get the 20-tooth gear I needed. This was bought from Tools for Cheap. Him right there. Uh, he sells aftermarket salt bend parts and uh, I, um, replacement parts. I also got um, the spindle adapter for the collets I got from him. Um, so it's 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 pretty decent. I mean, it's a gear. It's a little it's a little rougher than the ones that the original ones here. You can see. He's a nice and flat surface. This is a little bit rough. And uh, my only other issue with it is this side has a chamfer. This side is sharp and doesn't. So I'm going to have to just uh, run a countersink over that. And I'll probably get some uh, 400 grit sandpaper in a, in a plate and just smooth out one side. And that'll be the side that I put against um, the shaft and everything else. And now we have to put all the felts and everything in here. I already did the um, the small round felts. Now these felts are what I had left over from the original rebuild in the original rebuild kit that I had. Um, but you can get a rebuild kit from um, eBay. Just do a search for it, and uh, it'll give you the the, the wicks that have a it looks almost like a pipe cleaner it has a, a, a um, wire core to it it was much easier to get down the holes also this paint in case anybody wanted to know it is Sherwin Williams um, gloss uh, all surface enamel and the formula is right there hopefully that kinda comes in you can pause it write that down I got a paint drip on there, but that's it. Now this, uh, um, that formula I got from Brad, uh, basement shop guy. He, he did a lot of rebuilds. I think he rebuilt uh, a 9 inch, a 10 inch, a 13 inch, a bridge port, a drill press, a uh, self and drill press like mine, and also an Atlas drill press, if I remember right. Um, but you can find his channel right here right down the links below too um, I urge you to check it out and take a look at his restorations much better than mine I can say that but to show you right here we have that one flip top kit now if you look on the inside of this this is not part of the casting this is an oil channel that that gets goes to now that oil channel comes down and goes and feeds this. There's a hole right here. I know you can't really see it. But there's a hole in here and a hole in here. Now these two slots hold in flat wicks. From there, there is another hole that connects from this, the bottom of this one, to the top of this one, which holds another flat wick. See this little keyway? Oh, there's also another hole you can see that white puff in there that's another hole that goes down into here that holds a round wick there's another hole in the end of this which is kinda hard to see here right about here that slot holds a flat wick there's an adjoining hole right here in this brass bearing here that holds a round wick and there is another one hole right here that holds a round wick and it goes that way. Now, before you do all this, obviously you want to make sure all those passageways are clean. And the way I was able to do it is fill this up with some uh, some cleaner. I actually used uh, turpentine in there. And blow through it with some air and take a uh, pipe cleaner and scrub and clean out all those holes. Pull the old wicks out blow through with compressed air until it comes out as clean as you can. Now if you notice anything that doesn't have a slot 
like this takes a round wick. Anything with the slot takes a flat wick. Now I already have these round wicks in there, so we're all set with those, but I should have my flat wicks, which are somewhere over here. Just a piece of felt. Again, this is left over from my original rebuild. And we'll just take them, stretch them a little bit, pop them in the hole. And make sure they're pressed all the way down. Take a little X-Acto knife. Uh, let me change the blade on this real quick. Now I got a new blade in there. Let's give her a trim. And same thing on the inside here. Another felt here. And then the bottom here. Now those felts look a lot better than those ones, huh? And one more. Long one right here. So now you can see, felt, 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 round felt up this way, round felt here down that way, and another round felt from here to here, and here to here. So here to here, here to here, and there to down. Let me get all the shafts and everything laid out, and we'll start putting this together. Okay, now we're getting ready to put everything together, so I want to put the gears and the handles first. Now all the shafts that we have, every, every part that there's a slot in them, a felt goes in there. So this is uh, the shaft that the tree goes on. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. There's a felt in there. Also, the, which I just had in my hand, which ran away from me, the shaft that the screw gear goes on, there's a felt in here, and a felt on the end, and this is the shaft that these uh, selectors ride along. There's actually a felt in the very, very end here, where it fits into the casing. Now, you can't put that on until you get these on this shaft, because the gears ride in the same slot that the uh, felts do. So let's put these in and um, your handles sit like this. The flat sides here, as you can see, one side's flat. They That points towards the middle so that they can rest against each other. And also the gear itself goes towards the middle. And since there are needle bearings inside there, as you can see. We want to put a little bit of grease on there. I'm just going to use the same grease I used for my headstock, which is super lube. And we'll just put a little bit.
working a nice coating on there. Okay, I already got one done. So this one's got to go in this way. The biggest thing is just making sure you're in the hole of the bearing and you're not around the outside of the bearing, or otherwise, you'll jam everything together. So, give us a couple of taps here. Okay, I can feel we're in the center of that. Now I can't move the, the bearing there. Recess it just a hair. A little too far. We're, we got to make sure that the this flat side here, make sure that that's indented a little bit because these have to go right next to each other. There's that one. I'll touch up all this paint once I get everything together. So, I'll set these aside for now because uh, this will be the last thing that we put in there. Now, okay, now it's time to put the, uh, the tree of gears and everything in that place. And I already put some oil and soaked the wicks inside the bearing housings here. And it's going to go that gear tree. Then it's going to go the gear with the large gear pressed onto it. Then the one with the small gear pressed onto it. And then this one little one on the end. Now, don't confuse this gear here with the one that has the key slot in it that goes on the other shaft that sits uh, right here so I already soaked all the wicks with some oil we'll slide this in I had some burrs on the inside of these here that I had to file off um, also I drilled out the taper pin hole for a straight hole and we're gonna use a roll pin like one of you guys suggested instead of messing with that taper pin So,
And there we go. Add a little bit of oil to the wick. Make sure we're all nice and soaked in. And there's that section. All these gears here turn nice, nothing's binding. Make sure that other one here still spins. Which it does. Now on to this shaft here, which is this shaft. Soak up the felt. Same thing with the one in here. Now there's a key in this in this shaft that's got to line into that gear, so I'm just lining that up just to make sure everything fits nice before I shove this guy in there. And there's that. Drive it in. Okay. Okay, again, I drilled that out as a straight hole, and we're going to put a roll pin in its place. I'm on you. And there we go.
Everything moves nice and smooth, nothing's binding. So now we gotta put in our last shaft, which are gonna hold our um, little tumbler levers here. So let me turn this towards me. This groove here is where this pin sat, and you can see the pin is ground for clearance when you push it in. So you wanna make sure you have that in the right position. And also, we need to put, I have to get another one, but wicks right in the end, right where it goes through this channel. You don't want to put them in this groove because in this groove is going to be where these gears ride. You can see they have a, a little keyway um, that rides in these slots. So you only need the uh, felts on like, um, you know, about three quarters of an inch on the end. Let me cut another piece of felt, stick it in there, and we'll get this shaft in. Alright, let's get this shaft in place. Now the flat side of these little handles have to go into each other. So, And then the gears here ride in the middle. Now you can see this wear side, non-wear side. So I'm going to put the non-wear side, or non-worn side, into the gear. So... Place my felt in the slot. Soak those. should probably do first. Just grab a little drill bit, there's a little paint in that hole. Slot is pinned, everything turns freely. Flip it around. Whoops, far away.
and there it is. Everything moves. Everything moves by hand. No binding. I like that. And uh, once I get it up on the lathe there, I'll just um, I'll touch up whatever paint I got to touch up, which I'm not really worried about. Uh, it's gonna get scratched and oily anyway, so. Um, what I do need to do is put on the guide. Turn this on before I forget. Alright, got that guide in place. And there we go, that's pretty much it. This plate I have ordered, that should be coming. And uh, I do have to modify my lead screw, which I'm going to show you how we do that. Um, we we'll mount this up to the lathe and I'll figure out where I gotta cut it and uh, show you kind of how I'm gonna go along on and that'll be the next video okay now we gotta take off the uh, existing lead screw there I took the banjo and everything off the uh, left uh, lead screw bracket and I have my carriage all the way down to the right side of the bed so basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take these two screws off drop this bracket pull the lead screw until it disengages the worm gear and that's not going to get it out and I don't have to touch the carriage and I don't have to move any of that stuff so there's always one screw that refuses to come out Now let me get the bracket screws.
Alrighty. Got that box matched up there. Now I'm going handheld here. I figured before I take that off to put the lead screw in, we'll give it a run and see how she sounds. So I got it on uh, my slowest direct drive speed here. Keep in mind that the gears in here don't have any lube on them yet. I'm going to spray them down just like the other ones, but uh, I have everything in there kind of just to see if we, how we sound. So. Well, that's not too bad at all. Speed here, see if we get any noise. Here. Yeah, that's the fastest speed. I gotta tighten up that belt. A little bit of resistance on there, plus I got the big chuck. So. Actually, most of the noise is coming from reversing gear cluster. Not this. You can see how much inertia it has now. Yeah, this belt is a little loose. That's why it was squeaking. That's actually really loose. Um... Alright, so let me take this off, and I will run the lead screw in there, and we'll see how much I have to add to it. Okay, I was able to get the lead screw through, and that's how much we're missing. Now, as one of you guys said, you're pretty much right. You know, you got this Mr. Tailstock hanging out back here. I don't ever really foresee myself threading that far. Um, and this lead screw is actually pretty good. The threads on it aren't really worn. It's just as good as my other lead screw. So, what we have to do, or what I'm going to do is this this is three quarter uh, uh, a three quarter inch acme thread here and this is a half inch um, it's turned down half inch just below the threads and that fits into this cast iron bearing slash support so what I'm gonna do is take a piece of 12l14 here and I'm gonna drill it and ream it for half inch. This is pretty much exactly half inch, maybe a thousand thunder, just from where. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and ream this distance here. And then I'm going to Loctite this to that. Um, I can drill it and pin it. Uh, the, the, I can drill it and pin it also. Um, but I think the Loctite will hold more than enough. And I don't want to put a hole in this in case, you know, I ever want to get rid of this or go back to find another lead screw. At least I can get rid of this. It doesn't have a hole in it. It's not going to eat up somebody's bearing if I sell it to them. So we're going to add a piece from here to here. And then we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to turn this shoulder down a half inch so it fits perfectly in this bearing. So now the actual length that we have to add is going to be from the outside here pretty much eight and a half inches eight and a half inches will be perfect so um, I'll get to that and that will definitely be my next video and that will hopefully complete this project and uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to I don't think the the um, threading charts gonna come in time um, for the end of this series but on the next video I will show you guys that and we'll do some test threading after that, too, with the gearbox, see how much easier it is. So, that's the plan, and I'll see you guys on the next video.